G'day! In today's video, I'm replacing the hard drive in a HP 250G7. While I'm here, I'm also going to check out the RAM and see if we can potentially upgrade that. So let's get into it. And Katana's going to help as well. Now yeah, with one, two, three, four screws removed. I do believe there's also a couple of screws hidden under these rubber feet. And here if we use a pair of tweezers, should be able to peel it up just enough to be able to access them. Well with that I'll just keep going just to make sure there's no more hidden under there. We have four. That out of the way. Now take this one as well. Very sneaky HP. Very sneaky. There we go. Three screws hidden under this one, and four screws hidden under the rear hinge one. There we go. Now if I lift this up, what I want to do is put some pressure on here. It should hopefully get me in. If I lay this back down, slight twist to it, I should be able to get it to lift up. It looks to be that I'll also have to remove the DVD drive, like so. And keep going. There we go. In. So from here, what can we see? Let's go over it. So to begin with, we have a we have the SATA hard drive here, which is upgradable. So this is a 7200 RPM, assumably I'm going to assume a one terabyte drive, just going by the age of it. Potentially only 500 gig. To remove that, it's pretty straightforward two Phillips head screws here and here, and this little bracket will come off and be able to lift the drive up and out. One, two, bracket up. Hmm. Being a little bit challenging. There we go. And the hard drive will wiggle back from here. So it is a 500 gig WD black, which is not what I was expecting to find in here actually. I was expecting a blue or cheaper drive. Anyway, that's out of the way. To reinstall the drive is pretty straightforward. Slide in, put the bracket back on, and the two Phillips head screws. May take a little bit to align it. That should be all right, like so. Next up, we have one battery. To get this out is also pretty straightforward. One screw, two screw, and three. From there, up, and we're good. 
So looking around on here as well is one, that, one thing that I did not expect to see. We have a, a NVMe M.2 slot here. So they are pretty darn handy. So I'll go over that in just a second. Over up, we have two DIMM slots. Take that out. Four gig of DDR4 2666. I can get you guys in focus there. So installing that's very straightforward. Slide in on 45 degrees. With the notch lining up, push it in, push down. That's now installed. While we're here, I do believe I have another four gig stick I could put in there. I don't. So we'll leave it as that. Looking around as well, we have a replaceable charger port just here. So as mentioned, that is replaceable, connecting over to here. And what I'm going to do now with the battery still disconnected is install a M.2. So I take out the Phillips head screw here. Line this up, wiggle it in, push it down, and screw. And that's now installed. So very straightforward, similar process to the RAM. Now from here, battery slides under these tabs at the front. Push down, and we're reinstalled. And then from there, one screw, and three. So what I'm going to personally be doing here is cloning this drive to this drive using a Cronus True image and then have that as a primary boot drive, this as a secondary storage. Let's zoom this out a bit further. And from here putting the back cover on is pretty straightforward matter of lining up one of the corners, so I'll start over here, connecting it up and over, and then pushing around the outer perimeter of it so it all clicks into place, and then from there return your screws back to their original positions, which are all exactly the same length, and put the feet back on once more, and you should be all good from there. And that will do for today. I'll see you guys later. Bye.